So today in this lecture, we are going to discuss the vasodilator theory for the acute local blood flow regulation, vasodilator theory. So basically we are discussing the local and humoral control of blood flow by the tissue. That the mechanisms used by the tissues themselves to control the quantity of blood that is flowing to them in different circumstances. And we have discussed in the first lecture the different types of tissues in the human body different organs basically receive different percentage of blood and that percentage of blood the blood flow basically increase or decrease according to the needs of the tissue but that the our concentration is on the local mechanisms that are used by the tissues to control their blood flow we discussed that the two main mechanisms the two main mechanisms of blood flow are the acute control and the long term control they are they, they are the two main mechanisms that are used by the tissues to control their blood flow acute control basically is responsible for rapid change in the uh, rapid changes in the blood flow to a tissue for example muscle liver kidney heart or skin and the long term control basically is about the long term changes that are occurring in the tissue acute control was basically due to the rapid changes in the diameter of the existing blood vessels while the long term control was basically due to the increasing the number of blood vessels but there are a lot of other factors in the acute and long term control then we discussed the effect of metabolism and effect of changes in o2 availability or oxygen availability the main mechanisms that were responsible for the acute change of blood flow the, the acute control of blood flow to any tissue like muscles were basically due to the effect of metabolism the changes in the metabolism of any tissue and the changes in the oxygen availability to a tissue now today we are going to discuss the vasodilator theory the theory that explains the acute local blood flow regulation like how how the changes in the metabolism and the changes in the oxygen availability are responsible for the acute change or the acute control of blood flow to any tissue and that control that acute control due to the metabolism and due to the oxygen availability is basically being explained with the help of vasodilator theory so in order to understand or get a full uh, understanding of the whole lecture you need to uh, basically watch the previous two or three uh, videos only then you will have a, a complete overview of the whole uh, series of lectures so the vasodilator theory for the acute local blood flow regulation says according to this theory increase in metabolism we discussed that the acute control is mostly due to the changes in the metabolism and the changes in the oxygen availability so the, the vasodilator vasodilator theory says that increase in metabolism and decrease in oxygen availability basically leads to increase in vasodilator substances like adenosine carbon dioxide histamines potassium ions and hydrogen ions according to this theory if there is increase in metabolism or there is decrease in oxygen availability to any tissue there is release of vasodilator substances substances which will dilate or increase the diameter of the existing blood vessels and the vasodilator substances basically the most important vasodilator substances are the adenosine carbon dioxide histamines potassium uh, potassium ions and the hydrogen ions these substances are basically responsible for the in increasing the size of the blood vessels the vasodilator substances diffuse through the tissues to the precapillary sphincters met arterioles arterioles to cause the dilation so basically we have suppose for example here we have tissue with cells and this this tissue is being supplied with the help of some blood vessels so here we have the 
arterioles here we have the arteriole here we have the met arteriole here we have the capillary and here the black color is showing the precapillary sphincter when there is decreased oxygen when there is decreased oxygen or there is increased metabolism there is release of vasodilator substances like adenosine carbon dioxide histamines and potassium ions or hydrogen hydrogen ions these vasodilator substances they will go to the arterioles the met arterioles or the precapillary sphincters and they will cause the dilation they will dilate or increase the size of these vessels when they dilate the blood flowing to through these vessels will increase so the blood flow will increase acutely so this mechanism is used by the tissues to increase the blood flow acutely or rapidly and it is being explained with the help of vasodilator theory now the decrease in oxygen is mainly responsible for vasodilator substances although this theory says that the increased metabolism and decreased oxygen increased metabolism and decreased oxygen both release vasodilator substances but the decrease in oxygen is mainly responsible for vasodilator re release this has been shown with the help of experiments although different scientists different physiologists have different beliefs and different research have uh, given different results but mostly they believe that it is the decrease in oxygen supply to these tissues which is basically responsible for release of these vasodilator substances and among the vasodilator substances adenosine is the most important of for look uh, is the most important of local vasodilators so here we discuss that a lot of vasodilators get released in the tissue due to increased metabolism and decreased oxygen tissue like adenosine carbon dioxide histamines potassium hydrogen but adenosine has been considered the main vasodilator and oxygen decrease in oxygen is mainly responsible for vasodilator substances release and among the vasodilators adenosine is the most important vasodilator the local vasodilators now one example that proves the vasodilator theory or that explains the acute control of blood flow is the decreased coronary blood flow when the blood to the heart muscle when the heart here we have the heart heart is not only pumping the blood but it it in itself needs some blood for its own metabolism because it is also made of muscles now this coronary artery has some blockage here this is a coronary artery which is supplying the muscles of the human heart this is heart and this artery was basically supplying the blood to the muscles or uh, muscle cells of the heart which were basically contracting to supply blood to the human body or all the other tissues when the blood supply to the muscles of the heart in itself is decreased due to some blockage in the coronary artery there is decreased coronary blood supply which leads to the release of adenosine this adenosine here will, will cause vasodilation and will lead to blood flow back to normal so this is one example which explains the acute control of blood flow with the help of vasodilator theory where the decreased oxygen supply because of a block in the coronary artery the artery which is supplying the muscles of the heart has been blocked it leads to decreased blood flow decreased blood flow leads to increased adenosine release and adenosine then cause vasodilation and when the vasodilation occur this this blood vessel will increase in size again and when it increases in size again more blood will come again and the blood flow will become normal so that's the acute control the blood is blood flow is uh, coming back uh, very acutely and rapidly now another example that will uh, also explain the vasodilator theory for the acute control it shows basically the increased metabolism which is going to affect the blood flow 
when the heart activity increases when the heart is contracting rapidly for example in the exercise someone is exercising then it will lead to increased metabolism when heart is pumping rapidly the metabolism of the cells the demands of the cells will increase it will lead it will lead to utilization of more utilization of oxygen increase in heart activity increase in metabolism and increase in oxygen consumption so a change has occurred in the oxygen availability this will lead to decreased oxygen concentration it will lead to decreased oxygen concentration in the heart muscle which will lead to degradation of the atp adenosine triphosphate it will lead to degradation of the adenosine triphosphate or the adp which will basically release more adenosines and this these adenosines will cause vasodilation the vasodilation will basically means increase in the diameter of the blood vessels when increase in diameters of our uh, diameter of blood vessels occur the blood flow will increase again and it will be sufficient to cope with the high or the increased heart activity so basically the vasodilator theory it explains that due to the high metabolism due to high metabolism or decreased oxygen supply there is release of vasodilator substances like adenosine carbon dioxide histamines potassium ions and hydrogen ions these vasodilator substances they go to the met arterioles the arterioles met arterioles and precapillary sphincters where they act and cause dilation or increase the diameter these uh, dilation basically cause increase in blood flow and the restoration of blood flow to cope with decreased oxygen or increased metabolism basically the decrease in oxygen is mainly responsible for vasodilator release and among the vasodilators adenosine is the most important local vasodilator now two examples that prove the vasodilator theory for acute control due to metabolism and oxygen availability changes are the heart activity if the blood flow to the heart active heart is decreased it will lead to release of adenosine adenosine will cause vasodilation and which will revert back the blood flow to normal and if the heart activity is increased it will lead to high metabolism which will lead to increase utilization of oxygen which will lead to degra degradation of the adenosine triphosphate which will lead to increased adenosine which is a vasodilator and vasodilation uh, adenosine will cause vasodilation again and blood flow will become normal again so that's all about the vasodilator theory for acute local blood flow regulation thanks a lot for watching the video